Hey everybody, it's me again. Nice to see you here. It's a Mental Health Monday check-in time, and I have really contoured the crap out of my face today and my nose, and it looks like I have a whole new nose. Yay, I feel very Khloe Kardashian right now, okay? Just kidding, it's a filter. Look how big my lips is, and my mouth is, and how little my chin is. Hmm, <sighs> what was me? I guess I'll use my real face now. I guess it's a good time to do that. Hmm, oh gosh. Okay, for real, I'm back with my real face. It's really me, and I really did contour the crap out of my nose, so it looks like I have a much better situation going on, right? Of course it does. Anyway, so coming to you, I'm gonna do a quick um, hair tutorial and talk to you about me being diagnosed recently with bipolar two disorder. So with that, um, let's just dive into it. I like I said, I'm gonna do a quick hair routine. So if you're like in a hurry and you don't have a whole lot of time to spend on your hair, and you're also concerned about your mental health, check in right. Anyway, I'll be spraying my hair with Lang Revival Heat Shield. It is keratin infused with chamomile extract and locks out humidity. Thank goodness for that, am I right? So here it is. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Lang. Okay, so I'm gonna spray this on my hair. And we're gonna mental health check in. Yes, we are. And I'm gonna brush this through my hair about um, being bipolar and we will start with the definition of bipolar 2. So bipolar 2 disorder is um, a spectrum disorder and it's characterized by at least one episode of hypomania and we will define hypomania shortly and at least one episode of major depression which we will also define major depression momentarily and um, the diagnosis for bipolar 2 disorder requires that the individual must never have experienced a full manic episode now what is a full manic episode um, I don't know the actual um, definition of a full manic episode but in my opinion having gone to medical school um, it is where a person feels so completely erratic and out of control that there's just like this major explosion, usually of anger, that they just feel like they hate themselves. They can't even stand, you can't even stand yourself. You can't stand being around anyone. And it's not that anybody did anything to you or there's no rhyme or reason. It's just, you just suddenly just have this manic episode. You suddenly just go, go off. You also may experience um, bouts of higher sexual sex drive. You may experience, um, you know, increased crazy spending activity, a sense of superior, superiority. And um, what I mean by that is like with the outlandish spending, uh, that in particular is a telltale sign because, you know, people tend to, if they have, you know, extra money, you want to set it back. You want to save that money for your future or plan for a trip or do something smart with the money, not just go blow it like on food or go out to a bar and just be like, tabs on me guys. And it's not because you've got just, you're, you're just um, so rich, you don't know what to do with your money. It's literally because there is like a disconnect in your brain that's just like, woo, yeah, I'm it. And, you know, you want to provide all these things to those people. So anyway, back to the definition here. Instead of having a full manic episode where you are just like, woo, off the Richter, you know, unstoppable, you can do anything. Bipolar 2 is where you would have hypomania. And hypomania is um, a sustained state of elevated or irritable mood that is severe, or excuse me, that is less severe than mania, yet may significantly uh, affect quality of life and result in permanent consequences 
the ramification of regular spending, damage relationships from poor judgment. I can tell you that with the reckless spending, I have experienced unmedicated uh, the spending portion of being diagnosed with bipolar 2. And like if I had, if I was in a hypomania or manic, manic uh, state of mind, that I would just oh my gosh it was just like i needed everything i needed this and this and this and this towel this set of towels and this type of makeup and these kind of shoes and i need to go eat at the finest restaurants or i need to it's just like oh my gosh just no and it's like after you spend you don't really have anything to show for it like yeah you might have got had some makeup but the majority of the money that was spent during these um episodes was just completely like, where did the money go? Where did it go? I don't know. With this hair, um, all we're doing is just kind of rolling it up to the bottom uh, or to the middle of the hair, but we're taking it more so from the bottom. Like if you want um, more of a ringlet curl, you would take it from the middle. But if you're just looking for some body, you're gonna take it from the bottom and roll it up. And it does help to have a little bit longer hair, but it just gives it a little bit more body. Um, bipolar 2 also, I talked about poor judgment. We all make bad decisions from time to time. And we, um, we know, I mean, sometimes we make bad decisions and we don't think about the consequences at the moment. But if you have bipolar 2 disorder, it's like you do things, you don't even consider the consequences at all. It does not cross your mind. And then when it comes around that, oh my gosh, you know, I'm going to have to deal with the consequences of my actions, it becomes, it's like almost unbearable. Like you cannot it's almost like you lose the ability to function, which then turns into um, a, usually a major depression or a major uh, depressive episode. And those last a long time. I mean, you could be the most goal-driven person when you're in kind of a more level state of mind, but when you're in this depressive um, mode, you it's like you lose all drive to succeed in life and sometimes you know you may be able to sustain the life that you had but if something detrimental should happen it's like it is um the inability to pick yourself back up is just almost crippling well, actually, I would call it crippling. I wouldn't even say that it's almost crippling. It is absolutely crippling. And I can tell you because I have been there and I have done that. And it is, I'm still picking up the pieces. That's what I'm working toward right now. Bipolar 2 disorder is notoriously difficult to diagnose. And, you know, I only recently was diagnosed. And I think that the only reason that I was diagnosed is because I just got to this point where I was so broken and did not know which way to go, what to do, who to find answers with, that I finally reached out for help. And that's what a lot of people do. You know, unfortunately, people don't pray until something's so bad that they seek out prayer and, you know, help and guidance from other people. This is the same way. I freaked out and was like feeling, you know, suicidal and, like life was just not worth living no matter what and instead i thought you know what this is not this is not me this is not the person that i am i'm silly and i'm funny and i'm energetic and when i sought out help for i can't get my life together why can't i get my life together i feel like um for the most part i've been pretty successful and I mean successful in my own mind like I had been able to steadily work and um, you know just earn a living take care of things myself and not be dependent on anybody that kind of thing and uh, have prided myself in that and 
when I came to the realization that I'm not doing what I should be doing or I'm not where I feel like I should be in life and was just so completely deflated and hopeless and felt like, you know, I could just leave my life away. Like nothing in life is really satisfying or gratifying or feels good anymore. Like I'm not, I wasn't making jokes and I wasn't being my usual funny self. That's not me. That's not the person that I want to be. I want to be goofy and silly and talk in my different voices and just be me. All that is Rebecca, right? I sought out help and I hope that if you're experiencing, you know, a period where you just feel like, oh my gosh, all I do is lay it down, lay around. I'm not doing what I feel like I should be doing. I'm not successful. I'm not where I want to be in life. I do spend money like crazy or I am, um, you know, maybe hypersexual or hyper, you know, hyper anything, just taking everything to the extreme. Um, I hope that you too seek out help. So let's talk about the hypomanic episodes as defined. It says hypomania is the signature characteristic of bipolar two disorder. Um, it is a state characterized by euphoria and irritable and or irritable mood. In order for an episode for an episode to qualify as hypomanic, the individual must also present three or more of the below symptoms. And last at least four consecutive days to be present most of the day, nearly every day. So here's, you got to have three of these for four more consecutive days, not trying to help you self-diagnose, just trying to help you see if, you know, if you have an issue, there's nothing wrong with seeking help. Okay. Nothing at all. There shouldn't be a stigma around any kind of illness, but there is, you know, when HIV AIDS came out, when we first knew what that was, people treated those people so um, just crappy. Just they were not good to them. People didn't want to be around them. People were we didn't know how um, the disease was passed, so it was like, oh, you have the bubonic plague. I'm not going to talk to you. Kind of like the corona was um, when we first found out about that. When we didn't really know how it was passed from one person to the other, right? Well, anyway, there's no shame in getting help for yourself a pain reliever for a headache there's no shame in taking medication for something that you have physical ailment or mental ailment okay you with me uh three symptoms and have these symptoms four consecutive days so follow me um eat, uh, an inflated self-esteem or sense of grandiosity and sometimes that means it's like you can just feel so good about yourself that it's like, oh my gosh, my crap doesn't stink and everybody loves me and I'm so fly and I could have any man I want to or something similar to that. Um, a decreased need for sleep. Let me tell you, I have this very often and I can stay awake for, you know, a day, two, two, two days in a row, two whole days, no sleep. Um, just because I feel like, whew, I just had this just, a uh, gush of energy and then I can conquer the world and I've got all these great ideas and I'm going to do this, 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 and this. And then eventually the um, depression sinks back in and it's like back to, oh, I'm not crap and I'm not going to be crap. I'm just going to lay here on this couch and wither away or eat my life away or whatever is needed because you would feel so good. Mm -hmm. It happens a lot. And then you go into this thing where you go sleep and sleep and sleep and sleep and sleep. And you're like, why can't I just stop sleeping? It's because we got issues. It's okay. It's okay, baby. It's okay. Anyway, so, and you also, uh, the next thing is you could be more talkative than usual or, or you feel pressure to keep talking. Well, let me tell you, I often feel this way and I talk and talk and talk and talk and I volunteer all kinds of information that nobody asked for, that nobody asked for that information, but I volunteered it. I could tell you within the first few minutes of meeting my whole life story and you're like, but why we just made it? Why? Why I need to know all that? You know? Uh, I don't know. I just do. Okay. That's how it happens. Anyway, another one of the things that you were looking for, if you present three of these in four days in a row, is a flight of ideas or subjective experience that thoughts are racing. Well, I have lots of thoughts about uh, flights of ideas 
like I'll think, oh, I need to open this business or, oh, I need to make this um, an episode that features something like this, you know, a certain topic or whatever. Um, or I'll think, oh my goodness, I need to go back to school for this. I mean, it's just, you have so many ideas just hit you at once and it's just like, your brain is just like going, 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 and there's no slowing you down on the ideas that you got. And sometimes I'll watch an episode of Shark Tank and I'll be like, oh my gosh, I've got to invent something. And I can come up with some pretty good ideas. Sometimes they've already been invented, but sometimes they have not. And I'm like, ooh, I need to, I need to really develop this idea because that can really be something, right? Okay, the next thing is distractibility. Um, or attention too easily drawn to unimportant or irrelevant external stimuli. Stimuli. And have that, obviously. It's like, I'm doing something, doing something, doing something, something, and squirrel. You know? Have you ever seen that? Like, it's very, very easy to become distracted. I can, you know, unless I am making a con conscience e conscious effort, which I do now, I do try to make a conscious effort effort to stay um, on topic or on task. And you may notice that I play with my hair a lot and it's because I'm so easily distracted. I'll think, oh, that hair's out of place. Or, that doesn't look right. Or my mind is just constantly going, right? So it's hard to stay focused, um, easily distracted. The next thing is an increase in goal-directed activity, either socially, at work or at school, or sexually. Um, yeah, I definitely experienced that. Uh, I, I like to think that I'm very goal-oriented and that there's nothing wrong with being goal-oriented. But the thing is that when you do set these goals, you set multiple goals most of the time, and you're so just like, for this short amount of time while you're in this state, like, you know, do everything to try to get get these goals done and meet them and then when you don't the depression sets in and you're like i am nothing i am nothing i'm never going to be nothing and my life woe is me you know that kind of thing so um the next one is excessive involvement in activities that have a high potential for painful consequences such as engaging in unrestrained buying sprees mm -hmm. um sexual indiscretions, uh, foolish business investments. Uh, yes, check, check, and check. If you have these symptoms and you feel like you are at a point where you too might be ready to, for help, don't hesitate to reach out. Don't hesitate to ask for help and um, try to get yourself better to be the best you that you can be. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. All those things. For that reason, I would like to also read to you what it says um, per Wikipedia, 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 um, about um, the difference between hypomania and mania. It says it is important to uh, distinguish between hypomania and mania. Mania is generally greater in severity and impairs function. Remember that sometimes leading to hospitalization and in most severe cases, psychosis. Now, in contrast, hypomania usually increases functioning. Like I can be such a go-getter and a go-getter, right? Yes. Um, it, is, it is not uncommon for hypomania to get unnoticed. And usually it's because you are so proactive and doing good things during that time. But anyway, often it is not until individuals are in a depressive episode that they say, help me, insert me. Um, and even then, the history of hypomania may go undiagnosed. A lot of times we seek help for depression because we don't even know that we possibly could be, you know, could have um, bipolar 2. Um, and we're not discussing our hypomania um, with our uh, psychiatrist or whoever you're seeing. So it's very important that you also tell them if you do have these times that you explain to them about that, not just talk about the depression. How to meet five or more of the symptoms below. This is as far as having the uh, complete diagnosis of having bipolar 2 disorder. You have to be present during the same two week period. Four of these, five or more of these things need to be present um, in a two week period, okay? So a depressed mood most of the day, nearly every day, um, 
and it just you're feeling sad you're feeling empty hopeless um and it can be observed by others you may be just tearful no for no freaking reason or you may be extremely irritable okay um markedly diminished interest in pleasure or activities that used to bring you pleasure um nearly every day you're just like Bleh, during this period um, you may experience significant weight loss or weight gain. And let me tell you, I got the weight gain, okay? I wish I had the weight off, but I got the weight gain. Err, it. Um, and then the next one is insomnia or hypersomnia nearly every day. Now, I obviously have told you that I had that, but now I, during my depressive state, I would just sleep and sleep and sleep and sleep. It was like I could just not get enough sleep, you know? And then, um, psychomotor agitation just feeling relentless or like you're just slowed down physically like you just your body can't do it fatigue or loss of energy nearly every day feelings of worthlessness or excessive or inappropriate guilt nearly every day let me tell you about the guilt i have been in a position where i needed to make decisions one way or the other and i literally could not do it because I felt so guilty. It was like, if I do this, then this happens. If I do this, then this happens. And either way, it's not a good thing. So I just, I can't even make a decision at all. And that is not a good quality, people. That is not a good thing. Not to feel, um, uh, worthless. And I mean, to the extreme of just like, there is no value in me. Why do I live? Why must I go on? And you really, you feel it to your core. It's in your soul. It's terrible feeling. Um, the diminished ability to think or concentrate and being irritable or indecisive nearly every day. Hello, yes. It is so hard to make a decision during this time. And I mean, I had that trouble most of the time anyway, but there are days when my level of irritability is so heightened that it doesn't matter what anybody says or does. I just, I can't handle it. Like, I just, it's like, don't touch me. Don't talk to me. Just like, give me a minute to breathe. I'll calm down and I'll be okay. Um, on this little checklist here, uh, reduce thoughts of death. Um, not just a fear of dying, but a recurrent suicidal ideation without a specific plan, suicide attempt, or a specific plan for completing suicide. So what that means is it's just constantly kind of going on in your mind that you just maybe don't even want to be here. Like the world would be better off without you. Your family would be better off without you. Your job would be better off without you, school, whatever. And it just just keeps creeping back up on you. It's just like this overwhelming feeling of just like, well, what am I even doing? Why am I even here? Somebody help me out. And you can also experience mixed depression, which is, you know, you may have the hyperactivity and irritability at the same time. So it's like you're doing, 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 and you're like, don't, don't interrupt me because I'm busy and I'm doing, 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 you know. And it's like if anybody even comes in, I can tell you this from experience. If I'm doing something that I am in like super involved in, like research or something, and then somebody comes in the room and is trying to talk to me, it's just like, huh, I can't stop what I'm doing to help you. And it's not, and I am a very caring person and I'm very, very giving. But when I'm in this frame of mind, it's like, I can't, I can't deal with you. I can't deal with this. I can't deal with anything extra. It's just one track mind, right? the consequences and we don't know how to handle them we just shut down sometimes people shut down and they do take their lives sometimes people shut down and they turn to drugs or alcohol sometimes they um are just making such crazy decisions as far as you know maybe going out and partying or going on um risky dates and i mean like where nobody knows where you're at nobody knows who you're with and you just are making some sketchy decisions or business decisions and then it just all like coincides I mean um, collides and you don't know how to handle it and so then you may relapse because you thought you were like on the straight and narrow path and it's all good in the hood and we're gonna be all right and then it rears its ugly head it, it happens but the whole point in all of this is to tell you that do not give up just keep swimming 
keep going because I can tell you that life is worth living. People do love and care about you. I love and care about you. Even if I don't know you, I love and care about you because you were brought here for a reason, okay? Just like I was. I don't know what that reason is yet, but I'm trying to figure it out. And there is hope for tomorrow. There's no, um, no shame in seeking help. There's no shame in having a mental health disorder. And if anybody tells you otherwise, you can direct them to me and I'll tell them about they do, okay? Um, I just encourage you all to literally let go of your past sins. Sometimes the hardest thing to do as a person is to forgive ourselves. Um, I can tell you that I have made so, so many mistakes. So many mistakes. I have plenty of regrets. I've had plenty of bad things happen to me. And in spite of it all, I know that there is hope for tomorrow, that life is worth living, and you can be happy, you can be successful, and success is measured by us. Not what anybody else thinks, what we think, and how happy we choose to be each day, day in and day out. And I choose happy, and I hope you choose happy as well. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Have a great week. Woohoo! Monday!